what up? It's your boy Wiz Khalifa, man. This is Misha the Jewelry. It's your boy Chris Stowe. This is Trap Wait Kiss. Man, it's your boy Tay Cummins. Here's Center 2 Flash. It's your boy Chevy Woods from the Taylor Gang. What up? It's Chew Jackson. It's your boy Looty Boys. Girl over there on the way. It's your boy DJ Girl Quit Playing. And now you can get in with the Bird Boys. What's going on, man? We are back. It's your man, DJ Motor Main. It's the Berg Boys. I'm sitting down with Rafiq Cromwell yeah, yeah, and my yeah. man, Flack on the left. I mean, right on oh, the left. You, I'm man. Saying. <laughs> Too high. I'm just everybody, no, I'm used to everything being on my left. You know what I'm saying? We switch spots. Yeah, at you. It's, it's muscle memory. <laughs> muscle <laughs> we did switch spots. <laughs> Why we do that? But how you feeling, my brother? Good to have you on the couch. Man, I appreciate y'all having me here, man. I'm straight, man. What about y'all? How y'all boys doing? Feeling I'm good. Sure. Feeling great. Yeah, man. Definitely. I'm um, drinking. So <laughs> let's start this thing off like we should, my brother. How uh how have things been for you as a business person? But first, before you answer that, right. before you answer that, because I got to step ahead of myself, please tell everybody. Yeah. Who you are and what you do. Gotcha. I'm Rafi Cromwell, uh, owner and founder of Dreamers Worldwide Sports Representation. And uh, I do marketing, brand management, brand partnership, and concierge services for professional athletes. Period. So you've played and you're on the business side as well. Yeah. Um, are you still actively seeking to play? No, nah, man. I, uh you know, I had to make the transition. It was a, it was, ironically, a business move. You okay. Know? Um, to really see, okay, what I have going on here, business wise, with helping other guys, mm-hmm. opposed to thinking about myself. You know, so it was like a, I, I, honestly, to a point where chasing football became a little bit of a liability. You know, because it took away from everything else I could be doing, Mm -hmm. you know, and you never want to stop chasing your dreams, but you got to also realize what you're supposed to be doing. Did you, um, do you still train? Yeah, yeah, man. I'm still, I'm still in the gym constantly, you know, uh, still going hard. Can't, can't get no, can't get no belly, man. (laughs) (laughs) I can't, I ain't going front. The transition from football to the office, man, it was like, it was a a while for like a good, uh, I want to say maybe like three weeks. I was like, man, I ain't motivated to do nothing else but get this business straight and get mm-hmm. all my chips in line. I wasn't hitting the gym. Now, I'm playing ball in college. I was playing at like 205. It was cool, though. Man, I stepped on the scale one day. I was like 210, 215. I said, oh, no, nah, man, we got, to, we got to fix this. I said, I don't know about this, man. But, yeah, I'm still in the, in the gym getting it, man. That's what's up. So has it been – has the uh, tra- transition from – um, playing and then into being on the business side, being pretty smooth for you, you could say? Uh, it's been smooth, yeah. It's been smooth for the most part. Uh, it, has its, it has its rough moments, you know, uh, where, you know, I see some things happening and, you know, I see some of my guys getting opportunities, you know, that I came out, you know what I'm saying, uh, for the draft at the same year with. And I still kind of wish I had those opportunities, but mm-hmm. at the same time I see – the blessing of what I have going on, man. And, you know, honestly, it was another aspect of it was, you know, was battling a lot of injuries. So I was tired of waking up hurting and being sore all the day on time. And, and it wouldn't even be like waking up sore from a workout, mm-hmm. waking up sore from injuries is two different things. Like yeah, no, that could be things. crazy. Yeah, man. So uh, it's been What's smooth, the worst though. injury you've probably dealt with? Well, that you have dealt with? Uh... I want to say junior year in high school, man, it was junior year in high school. It was a day, well, not even junior year, it was the summer going into junior year. So the day after school let out, it was, uh, we had like practice down the field, like one of the first practices. And I went to catch a pass and I hit a ditch in like the, in the field. And it was my left knee, had, everything Ooh. basically dislocated and popped. It popped mm-hmm. out, and then I laid down and popped back and popped it back in place myself. I got up and walked off the field. I thought everything was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I got up and walked off the field. I thought everything was cool. Kind of found out I had like some uh, some damaged cartilage in my knee, and then I like uh, broke a piece of the back of my kneecap. Ouch! So that yeah, in surgery they had to like go take my whole kneecap mm-hmm. off, clean that out, and fix ah. it. Between that man and then uh, senior year in college, we was playing Cal U and. 
it was it was probably like the second quarter, beginning of the second quarter. I broke this hand, I broke broke my right hand, and was making a tackle, and this literally this whole part like cracked in half. And that was on a Saturday, man. And I dag on the I thought I like dislocated one of my fingers because it was hurting my knuckles. So I'm like, oh, I'm cool, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'll get it taped up. And then we went in halftime, and the doctor was like, man, you I think your hand is broke. And I was like, no lie, those are my hands. I'm like, all right, well, fuck that. It's homecoming. We got to finish this game. Like, so I went ahead and got my hand taped. I still had pictures. I had my hand taped up like this the rest of the game, man. That was Saturday. I didn't go to the hospital until Monday. Wow. Yeah. And it was homecoming, so I was fucked up. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I was like, you know what? That was a young move, though. That was, I should have went to the hospital, man. I was I woke up Monday morning and my hand was like real, real stiff. And I was like, I can't move this. And then I went there, like, was feeling around on it, and I felt like the whole one side of my hand kind of shift down and pop back up. I was like, yeah, something's not right. That ain't supposed to do that. So I just emailed all my professors. I didn't go to class. I came back with a cast. It was from here up to my fingertips, and I was still playing. Jeez. So, yeah, man. Warrior, man. Yeah, Warrior. Man. And I finished that game, too. Like I said, I finished that game. So that, <laughs> I mean, that was that was bad, though, because everybody seen my hand was messed up and was trying to take me out for real, for real. But... It was cool though, man. Well, you handled that, and, and now <laughs> oh, uh, my hand is yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel yeah, like man. my hand is hurting now, yeah, man. man. Try to crack my knuckles. And shit. <laughs> <laughs> you handled that, and now you've moved on to uh, to other things. So, yeah, man. What's uh, your goals now? Uh, just keep, you know, um, progressing, man. I try to, like I say, I tweet it all the time, man. I compete with myself. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Look at I don't let this world rush me. I don't look at anything anybody else is doing. I mean, I want to see all my guys win. I even tweeted that maybe yesterday. I said, I want to see all my dogs win, you know, no envious behavior. There's enough money for all of us out here to, to live comfortably, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's really what I want to do, man. Um, I just had a big thing happen recently, you know. I've been quietly doing marketing and endorsement stuff for Antonio Brown, man. So oh, that's dope. I just locked in a deal with him for uh, Complex, man, a two-part deal. Uh, just got that locked in, man, and, you know, trying to make Absolutely. some things happen and then actually getting ready to uh, work with another guy I actually trained with um, coming out in the draft, my man, Jalen Richard. Uh, shout out to him, too, man. He just found out him and his wife were pregnant. You know? Oh, wow. Um, yeah, he, man, he was Big running ups. back from the Raiders. Uh, babies. And get ready to start working with him, man. So Bird that's boys really... love the babies, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, that's the thing, man, <laughs> just, just progressing, man, you know, trying to find different avenues to – you know, expand what I have in my mind and just, you know, be better than the day before. Do you have any um, highlights that you'd like to speak on? You know, maybe some of the Plan good days. moments, you know what I'm saying? Oh, man. That, pe- that you may, may may not have gotten to really talk about. Uh, I know you got a win somewhere that you've been like, you know. Yeah, I mean, out the um, bag. <laughs> uh, as far as just football or just in general? Just in, just in general, you know, something that uh, you're, okay, you know, yeah, I, um, excited about. Uh, one thing I was excited about, man, was I always talk about where I came from. You know, I don't know if you guys recently saw uh, the Shade Room had did an interview on me, and uh, they posted it, and they got a, you know, a lot a lot of buzz going, man. Uh, one of the things I talked about in there was the day of the draft. I look at this as a win because. All I've been saying is, man, all 2018, you can check my Twitter, you can check my Facebook. I've been saying all W's, no L's, man. And that's because of what I define as a W because I'm running my own race. You know what I'm saying? So I see as a, a win for me, man, a huge win was seeing where I came from. In 2016, man, I, I said it in the shade room, uh, the day of the draft, man, I had maybe like four teams interested in me. You know, and the last day, last day came, none of those teams called, none of those teams, you know, Wanted to sign nothing, and dude, I had two finals left to take to finish school. Uh, my bank account was negative a hundred dollars, no lie, and I had crashed my car the week before, so I had no whip. And I was in Pittsburgh and had to get to Slippery Rock to take my finals. Um, to now, you know, I'm actually starting up a new business venture I got going on called Brand Classroom. Uh, starting out to be launching in May. That'll be, uh, you know, a, a monthly subscription but it'll send weekly uh, videos out to people that subscribe on how to start and maintain a business. Okay. Uh, so I have that going on, man. But just going from, 
I cried my eyes off the day that last day of the draft to having nothing, trying to figure out what I'm going on, what I got, what I got going on, or what I'm going to do, man. To Super Bowl weekend, I'm in a NFL Players Association private VIP party, bumping elbows, joking with Stephen A. Smith and Odell, and cracking jokes and exchanging numbers with them guys. You know, like that's in a matter of what year and a half, two years. You know, and that that's the biggest dub, man. Uh, and then just you know. Biggest dub, always waking up in the morning, man. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> always waking up in the morning. Uh, I'm trying to think of some silent things. I mean, I think the Antonio Brown thing may have been my silent W, you know, because I really didn't I didn't really post it. You know, I didn't post anything about it. I didn't really say anything about it, you know, uh, which is kind of grinding in the cut with it, man, and, you know, just taking my wins one day at a time. That's it, man. <laughs> The people like. The people like. That was, that, that was good. That was the people what like. position did you play? I was a corner, safety, and a, a nickel back. I'm not sure if a lot of people are familiar with that, but it's basically the nickel was like the hybrid linebacker, safety type of dude. So I was getting bounced around a lot, man, just because I was I wasn't the tallest, but I always had a different build. Like I was bigger than a lot of the, my other guys at my position physique wise but height wise I wasn't so I was always bounced between corner um just for uh setting the boundary keeping run plays you know uh from not breaking big yardage to then okay this dude can tackle so let's get him involved in the run game so now I got bounced to safety and all kind of stuff so I was all around man yeah, it was your forty like forty. I had four, five, six, four, five, four, five, six. I ran. My, uh, I did a uh, combine. That's still fast. I, I don't know why. I people, tell people that all the time. People be thinking just because you don't run like a four, two, four, two, four, or three, right. or man, something. Can you listen. imagine them running that fast at safety. Listen, man. <laughs> listen, I <laughs> saw a dude. People by, uh, like that, but I'm just saying. There's a like, dude. A four, five is still fast. There's a dude in the league right now. Whenever I was doing one of my workouts. No lie, I witnessed this man with my own two eyes run a four two nine. That's Dog, crazy. that's moving. And people forget that four fives are still fast because yeah. they hear about these four twos and four threes, and it's like, yo, you're running forty yards in four point five seconds. Like that's yeah. fast. And what it was, what what it really shaped out to, man, is. A lot of times they want to see this forty stuff, but they really like. All right, they no lie. The Saint Scout was like, "Look, I don't give a damn about your forty. Like, I'm tired of seeing people run these fast ass forties and then don't be a football player." Mm-hmm. You know, and I was like, "That's, That's real cool. talk." Like, because you get people go out there and they run these blazing times, but then don't pan out. Yeah, you know? like so, you get you get like the combat warriors, and then like you get they people get, that test they get out there and they don't uh, and don't yeah they test well and then they, they don't do well exactly do. man and yeah. you see that you see that a lot you know and that and then you get a lot of guys that um that deal that that deal with this idea that they're a lot better than they actually are you know you see that a lot man and I think that's one of the hardest things that. I deal with with working with players because even with guys in the league, a lot of guys they get they're in the league and they're like, oh, I'm in the NFL. I should be getting paid to do this and do that." And it's like, "Okay, you are in the NFL, but then you also got guys that oh, you got Odell Beckham, you got Antonio Brown, you got all these other guys with huge names." Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, man, these companies it sound. It, I'm gonna put this in a perspective that everybody will understand. It's like that group of shorties in the hood that everybody know. And everybody come back to type of deal. It's like that. <laughs> it's like the league and these companies, they cycle through the same group of guys while that name is hot. Mm. So, you know, and, and, it, and it's hard to really, not even hard, but it's hard to get, well, sometimes it's hard to get these guys to understand that you got to create some groundwork first with the, with their stuff. You know, like you got to build up a local celebrity type mm. of deal, you know, and sometimes it may not be a paid deal off the rip. You know, you might have to go read to the kids or uh, get some free clothes or something, you know. So, yeah, man. It's a big, big entertainment league, you know, not just playing league. You know, you got to yeah. be able to sell too. You got to be able to sell, man. Because a lot of guys don't think they think, like I said, they they're in a the league. They should be paid to do this, but at the same time, it's like, what are you returning to that company? You know, mm-hmm. what is this company going to get on their return on investment and 
a lot of times these a lot of dudes I run into a lot of NFL guys, believe it or not, they could care less about social media, but that's where the money is. No lie. One of my first deals I was working with is Invisalign. They were telling me we were just talking budget stuff. They paid a person that was just social media famous, like 20 bands, just to post a picture of them smiling. Wow. All because they had social media followers. I'm like, this person probably don't even, it's probably only known in a certain area, you right. know, or you probably wouldn't even recognize them off of social media. But they, that money is out there, man, you know, but it's all about what can you return, you know. And I wanted to ask also about... Um CTE, since it's a big topic. Oh, man. Um, do you have any uh, thoughts on that? I thought you were going to say, do you have any CTE? Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, but you haven't had any problems with, have you had any? Uh, no, I, ha- I, had, a, I had a concussion. I had a concussion uh, freshman year, really bad. I almost, that was like a story in itself. I almost got kicked out of school because my grades dropped, man, and I actually, I got technically kicked off the football team. Because I couldn't, I couldn't keep my grades up because I wasn't able to go to class. Um, but that was like the only time I ever had a head injury. But it was bad though because I hit the ground, I blacked out, and I to this day I still don't remember the point from me hitting the ground to getting on the sideline. You know, and that's that let me know right then and there. I'm like, all right, this stuff is serious, man. And there was a lot of times where people would be talking to me, and I'd be like, wait, what? You know, it was just everything was real fuzzy. You know, um, but CT, man, I mean, honestly, as much as I love ball, man, when I have kids, man, I don't I don't think I'm going to be with them playing sports like that, at least contact sport. If that's something they want to do, I'm not going to hold them back. But I'm not going to also be like, oh, I play football, so you got to, too. It's like, man, there's so many other ways to really express yourself and, and go get it out there, man. It's like, it's like uh, you know, why keep running yourself into the same wall when there's new ways to get through doors nowadays? True, you know? yeah. true. <clears throat> my my pop instilled in me uh, to not want to be the player, to, but maybe be the GM or the the Man. the owner or something. I'm Man. like, yeah, and it great took pop. Me. It's yeah. not that fucking easy. <laughs> that's a great, <laughs> that's you know, a great thing mindset. to instill. Yeah. No, you know, it's a great, great mindset. mindset. It is, yeah, man. Sure. It took me a long time to realize, like. The guys on the field are making money, but those ain't the guys that's really making the money, you right. know. And it took me, checks. it took me a long time to realize that because I'm thinking like, you know, what I'm saying I see all these guys, and I knew a lot of guys coming up that played like honestly, man. One of my uncles was the other cornerback when Deion Sanders was with the Falcons. That's you know crazy. Saying? So that's you know, I had an uncle who <laughs> uh, was. Defensive tackle on the Falcons. Hard when when Dion was there. Look too. at that small small world, yeah, man. Yeah, but you know, yeah, seeing I watched him. <laughs> <laughs> but seeing that stuff though, man, it made me think that these are the guys with the money, but not taking into account, man. There's always the people that you don't see on camera that's really making the money, man. Right. And that that made me realize, and that's what made me realize about this. Like, I give you a quick example of how fast money can be with this marketing stuff, man. Like a general. Payout is like 20% of a deal. That's a general payout of a deal. But then you also factor into most of these guys are also paying you per month. Now, that can fluctuate to whatever they're paying you. But then you got companies throwing out deals like, you know, you got Nike throwing out million-dollar deals, easy, multi-million-dollar deals. You're getting 20% of that. Now, you multiply that by you managing six, seven guys. You know what I'm saying? It's so so fast, and you don't have to be in a spotlight. You don't have to, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you, of course you got to watch your character because how ironic would it be for you to be acting a fool when you're trying to show these guys how not right. to act a fool, you know? Um, but yeah. it would be exactly. Ballers. And when I, I walked, in, I love when I walked into too, that party, that's what it felt like. Down there in Super Bowl weekend, no lie, I walked in. The bar was made out of ice. It was the NFL Players Association logo. <laughs> they had a... Uh, you they see Johnny a, Manziel there? Was I he, didn't, but I saw... Um, shots off the <laughs> that. I will say this, man. We yeah, put, put Johnny Manziel I will say this. Players. My dog, o, Odell, is a fun dude, man. I will say that. Um, but it felt like an episode of Ballers. What do you say? I've been hearing trade rumors. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm with it. They said uh, the Rams are aggressively... If he goes with the Rams, I said this other day on Twitter. The Rams are going to be like the yeah, new like uh, NWO it's a, or something. It's a bro. great they marketing deal. It's there. a great marketing deal if he goes to the Rams because you're putting him oh, into a, bro. Hollywood, bro. He's already has oh, that man. Hollywood stature. Like, literally, when you see him, like, 
there were people in that party, grown men, like dance. Oh damn! Oh damn! Oh damn! Like yelling. We were in the uh, the Remy Martin room. There was a Remy Martin room in there, and there was a straight that the logo Remy Martin logo was made out of ice. And all they were serving up was different variations of Remy Martin. So we're in there. Hell. Stephen A. Smith in there. We're in there cracking jokes. I told him his hair looked like a yarmulke, man. Ooh. We was all cracking up. <laughs> it was kind of funny, Ooh. man. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, seeing that stuff, man, it's like a lot of people don't realize. Like you said, the trade room, man, that stuff is so, it's so business-wise. Oh, you know, yeah. Business-wise. Now, I felt like football-wise... Rams is cool, but if he was to go to Cleveland and be back yeah. with Jarvis Landry, and yeah, that you would got be, Josh Gordon, that's that would be crazy good for them. But I don't want. I don't know about that. him as a player, as far as like time. I said, marketing I'm a stuff. Fan, you know what I'm saying? So. It, it's going to take time, so but I definitely don't want to see that. That's deadly, happen. though. Yeah. You know, just because of what everybody yeah. they picked the up. Browns, G, like I don't never want to see the Browns good <laughs> ever. <laughs> you say they got to stay the same. Yeah, they got to be. But was he dancing at the party? No, nah, he pulled a slick move on me. Though. I was about to say. He pulled a slick move on me, man. We were uh we were cracking jokes and there was a couple of females in there from like the the Eagles, a couple of cheerleader uh cheerleaders from the Eagles. And one of the girls came up and they saw she saw us talking and she was like, Hey, what's up guys? And no lie, he looked at me like I looked at him. This mug gonna be like this, and then slid off. I'm like, bro, I don't want this. Like, I walked away too. I'm like, no, nah, man. But like, um, no, nah, he wasn't dancing. No, he was on some real cool low key stuff. Well, I ain't gonna say low key. He was. Ha- I mean, he was in his element. He was having fun. You know. Yeah. I mean, everybody was though. I did see. See, you I see a lot of women not care about it being cold. Like when it comes to shit like that, when they yeah, around man. ballers, like I seen a lot less clothes than I thought I would see. Like. I mean, short dresses, and it was ballers like, equal flesh, bro. It yeah. was, it was, it was sickening, bro. Like it was like, I'm cold for you, and I got on a pea coat. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and Minnesota's cold as hell. That pea coat felt like a, a windbreaker, dude. But when I left, it was like they said, uh, it was negative three degrees and with they, a wind chill of negative twenty. You can get frostbite in a half an hour. Fuck that, and they probably yeah. have no panties on. A half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing. They just out there dressed in skin. Well, if you could be a rapper, man, what would your rapper name be? What would my rapper name be? <laughs> Funny. I actually used to do music. I was musically inclined for since I was born. I played the piano, the all that type of stuff. No, no lie. You could probably still find this stuff on YouTube. My man probably gonna hate this. My man, uh, <laughs> I still call him Royal, but his name is uh, Lou by the Lou from the Bayou. Okay. And he's from here in Pittsburgh, man. Real dope artist. But we had a group, and it was called Goomba Nation, man. Goomba and Nation. Goombas came from the from the Mario. Mario. Yes. Yeah. And where it came from, <laughs> we, when we would go and see people perform, you know how they had um, what was the the, the club down there in the strip? Um, Crowbar. No, no, no. The one it changed like twelve questions. different times. Questions. questions. It was questions, yeah, yeah, but then it was uh. It was a couple other names. It was a couple other names. But we they would always have the local performances. Anytime we would see somebody go up there and do some unprofessional stuff, we'd be like, yo, they're doing some Goomba ass shit. Like, like, this is some real Goomba shit, yo. And we just took it, but we turned it into it was greatness, optimism, uh, opportunity, musician, brilliance, and ambition. It was something like that. We turned it into an acronym. But my name was Mike Jetson, yo. Like, no Jesse. lie, and it came from Mike Vick because of football. He was always one of my favorite guys, and I thought the Jetsons was on some real futuristic shit. Like, and you know what I'm saying they were just in a, a space that nobody could touch them. You know what I'm saying that's really, I really that was Mike it. Jetson. Mike Jetson, Mike man, Jetson. and I legit, I had a joint on, uh, <laughs> on, um, you know, uh, swag, swag. Uh, I had a joint on. I had a song on his interview on his uh, radio show. We did a couple of interviews at CMU. We did a couple show. Yeah, it was. Well, great. Was it more uh, like? What was it more like bounce rap or was it more? It was. Like, it was legit. Uh, I mean, I just talked. I I did. I wasn't did one of those talk, people. Like, I talked about what I knew. Okay. I talked about. You know what I'm saying. So like, clothes. if we was to if we was to do like a graphic on you, well, could we put like a hat on you or could we put like a little. Uh, do rag on you, or it definitely was do rag. It was right. definitely do rag. Because I can remember, I just cut my hair too. Yeah, I, just I know, cut my I hair like two weeks. But you ago. had been growing it for how long? Six and a half years. Bro. Okay, but so. that was before then, though. 
All I right, was rapping yeah, before right. I had started growing my hair. So, so, so sauce, yeah, we, man. we gonna need a do-rag like I had a, for I had his a head. <laughs> do-rag. That, dude, that's the you thing right now, the man. The Goomba gang coming back? Man, we... No, we definitely not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> that's a rap. But my Solo man, shit. my man Lou, man, I feel I like he's... he's still doing his thing. I think I heard a, a jam from him um, not too long ago. Man, he's he's, he's one of dudes. With, uh, I, Wave and Lane, I believe. Yep, yep right across yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. He's one of dudes I feel like... Is very underrated because he doesn't fit the mold of what a lot of people are seeing. You know, a lot of people are used to hearing. Um, but the dude, man, I mean, he's, I've seen him go into the studio in legit freestyle, a whole song, and it was like punchline after punchline. And I'm like, this is some Cassidy type stuff, you know? That's lit. But there wasn't, that's not what's hot right now, you know? So, but yeah, that was my, that was. Who me? Oh man, I ain't got the bars no more, man. I'm I'm trash now, bro. Yep. I'm trash. I was more. I went more into. I took it more into poetry than anything, man. You know, to be a hundred sure. with you, I did a bunch of poetry. I did a bunch of poetry slams in college. I did some at Edinburgh. Uh, I did some at Slippy <laughs> Rock. Um, I did some here in Pittsburgh too, for real, man. That's where I really took the athletes. Really want to be rappers. Oh, rappers really want to be athletes, yeah. and they say that all the time, though. You know, it's the truth. Everybody wants to be involved in yeah, entertainment. Yeah. It's, stuff, it's like a, it's just like a see. I mean, not secret society, but it's a big influence. You know? It is, man, because it's like all influence. It's by like each other. ninety percent of rappers played ball at one point, right? Yeah, and ninety percent of athletes were on your downtime. You in a circle with your homeboys Jeez. freestyling. <laughs> like that's just the truth, you know. Especially in camp, you bored, you ain't got nothing else to do. You freestyling, whatever. Some you know? people came up in it, you know, all all three ways. Like my man uh, Rontez Miles. Oh yeah. man, that's my dog right yeah. there too, man. Was, I actually, it's crazy. Yeah, I, stopped through. I actually shit. was about to hit him up about his marketing. Like, yo, let me do your marketing. You know what I'm saying, like, I'm that's that's why the angle I took too, man, was you know uh, something for the player by the player, but also. We know so many guys that play professional sports from this town, man. It's like, let me be somebody that's like minded, like you. Come from know where you come from. Come from the same same grind, same hustle. We getting it out the mud, and take this to a new level. You know, that's really where. Um, man, that was my angle at first. You know, uh, that's a good angle to have. Yeah, man. man. It, and it was it, it worked. You know, I got three guys in the draft right now. Um, you know, they they're making some things happen. You know. Shout out to the Berg Boys, man. All my guys in here, you know, real, real, real dope platform for everybody in Pittsburgh to really make some things happen, shed light on everything that's going on in the Berg, man. And we about to expand and do some crazy things, man. Shout out to my my, my people in here, man. We just, we loving it, man. Spills on the ones and twos, making it happen. You know, make sure y'all give me my do rag too. Y'all see this curl popping? I didn't get called Luther Vandross, Johnny Gill, Brian McKnight, everything, bro. So yeah, that way. That way. <laughs> that way. <laughs>